So this started life as a kid's quad bike that we bought off Facebook Marketplace for $100. We modified it and turned it into a drift car and then we threw a turbo onto the 50cc two-stroke motor. We pushed it even further and added nitrous as well as the turbo to the 50cc motor. And when that motor let go, we threw in a 125cc four-stroke motor. It has a clutch and a shifter with a four-speed gearbox. And I can honestly tell you, this thing is scary fast. Like it does wheelies. <laughs> It has plenty of power. So of course, we're gonna make this even faster and throw a turbo onto the 125cc four-stroke motor. But we're not just gonna slap a turbo on this thing. We're gonna take it one step further. So I did a bunch of research on these 125cc motors as picking the turbo size was gonna be super important to actually having this work. So I jumped on Max Speeding Rod's website and did a bunch of searching and found a turbo that is going to fit our needs. And that is this bad boy right here. Woohoo! Suss that out. The link is in the description if you wanna buy this exact same turbo for your setup. Use code MikeLake for 10% off, but this turbo is the perfect size for our small motor. This turbo is off a 1.6 litre turbo turbo diesel motor. Now turbo diesels typically use tiny turbos. So even though this came off a 1.6 litre motor, it's actually a perfect size for our 125cc motor. It has a tiny two inch intake in the front and look at that tiny exhaust wheel in the back. Perfect. It's got a V-band core, V-band rear, and it's got an internal wastegate, which is exactly what we need. But like I said, we're going next level on this. And that's what this next box of goodies is all about. So currently this motor is run by a carburetor. And that means to get the fuel and air in into the motor, it uses this, a carburetor. So air goes in the front here, there's fuel in the bowl here, and they mix in here and go through this plenum into the motor, make the explosion, and that's what makes the power out the exhaust. But recently I was doing some late night searching and I honestly couldn't believe what I came across. You can get fully tunable air fire conversion setups for these motors. So I jumped on Alibaba, immediately ordered the kit last week, and this morning it arrived on our doorstep. So here in this box, we have an air fire conversion for our 125cc motor. Ooh, so many wires. So like I said before, this is a complete air fire conversion kit for our motor, but it also contains everything, apparently, that we need to tune the motor. So first up, we have our intake manifold. So this has a throttle position sensor on the manifold, which is freaking awesome. And this is essentially where the boost is going to go into. And it also has a place right here where the fuel injector goes, which is absolutely bonkers. It looks like quite a nice piece of kit as well. This is all really well made, which is very surprising. Next up in the kit, we have an O2 sensor. So this goes into our exhaust, and this allows us to read the air-fuel ratio going through the exhaust so that we can properly tune the motor with boost. It's actually mind-blowing that you can get these so small that they would work for such a small motor. Next up, we have this tiny fuel injector. It's so freaking cute. I don't know how many cc's it is, but again, it looks like a nice piece of kit, and this goes into our throttle body. All right, we have something here that I assume is the coil, perhaps. Some of the stuff I literally have no idea what it is because this is my first foray into this kind of EFI setup for this kind of motor. Here is a significant part of the kit though, and this is the fuel pump. This is actually crazy. So, so this is our high pressure fuel pump for our fuel injector. It's got a send line, a return line, and a line that goes straight to the fuel injector. And on top of that, we have the fuel hose which is just some clear piece of hose, but actually I don't mind that it's clear because it means we can actually see whether the fuel is flowing, which is always nice. Last but not least is this. This is the most important part of the whole kit, I'd say, and that is our ECU. Now this isn't just an ECU, this is a tunable ECU. It comes with a USB cable so that we can literally plug into our computer. Every wire is labeled, so it should be fairly simple to wire it up and we can literally tune this ECU and this motor with tuning software, which is absolutely mind blowing to me. Sorry to get a little nerdy with you guys there, but I really wanted to explain the ins and outs of that kit because I couldn't find much info myself online about it. And I think it's a pretty awesome bit of kit and I cannot wait to fit it to our motor. So on top of the kit that we're gonna be fitting onto this motor, we are going to do a front mounted intercooler with custom stainless TIG welded piping, full exhaust, and basically build the setup to a really high standard. This has got to be the world's cutest turbo kit on this table right here. So what are our goals for this thing? Well, I really wanted to dyno tune 
turn this thing before we put the turbo setup on. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to organize that because everyone's so freaking busy at the moment. But we do know that these motors put out about seven horsepower from stock. So we're just gonna say, this thing makes seven horsepower and we will dyno tune it after the turbo setup gets installed. But my goal for this setup is to have it genuinely working as a proper full turbo kit, making all the right noises, fully tuned, doing all the right things. Now, before we get started on making the turbo manifold and all the fun stuff like that, we are going to have to go a little backwards first. As it sits, I'm not happy with how the frame is. The front wheels currently touch this area here, so I want to extend the wheelbase forward and potentially we're going to widen the rear track as well. We're going to remove these wheelie bars and all of that stuff and we're just going to make some general improvements as we go with this setup. I do have a goal in mind in terms of trying to get this thing up to a certain speed. It's probably a little bit out of reach, but 100 kilometers an hour on this thing would just be absolutely hilarious. Obviously, that would be in a controlled environment on a track. So first things first, let's just dig into the front and kind of see where we get to. So once again, we're tearing down the drift cart for what feels like the thousandth time. We're removing the fuel lines and tank to make way for an upgraded unit. We're also removing the old pedals as we'll be upgrading to hydraulic brakes and a new throttle setup moving forward. Then off comes the seat and the old engine lube as we'll be upgrading that and finally the wheelie bars. And once again, just like that, our drift cart is naked. All the wires removed, everything exposed, and now we can get to work figuring out how we're going to modify this frame to make it a little bit safer so that when we do boost it and make it faster, we don't die. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some cuts and the whole front of the frame is going to come off the rear of the frame so that we can make an extension and move this forward A eh? so that this doesn't hit here. Also, when you extend the wheelbase of the frame, you're actually adding stability as well, which is always nice, especially at high speeds. I don't want to make this frame a huge amount bigger. I just want to make it like a little bit bigger so it's more stable, but I still want to keep its compactness, especially for when it's sitting here in the shop and we want to put it away somewhere. If it's too big, it's literally just in the way all the time. And that does become somewhat of an annoyance, whereas at the moment, it actually fits quite nicely under the stairs there. So when we're not using it, it's not in our way. But I think we will extend the rear of the frame a little bit further back and we're going to widen the track at the rear because at the moment the front track is wider than the rear track So we actually have some room to move here and that'll make the frame a whole lot more stable as well But right now we'll remove the steering column and we're gonna make our cuts to the frame and see where we get to Once again, we have chopped into our frame. By this stage, we've modified this frame like so many times, I've lost count. And we could have easily just built a whole new frame, but I do not want to lose like the essence and the character of what we've built, because you know, this used to be a kid's quad bike and I want to keep, you know, at least some essence of that within the build. So this is the basic idea that we have. As you can see, I've just cut it out, but essentially we're just going to extend the wheelbase forward. But I think the last thing we're going to do, we'll whip the carburetor off because we no longer need this. And I'm going to quickly test the new throttle body that we got, make sure that it's the right one. But I think it already looks so much better just by extending the frame a little bit. This thing looks so badass when it's naked as well, but. So off comes the old carburetor to make way for our fancy pants new EFI manifold. After a few minutes of scratching my head, I managed to figure out which way everything was supposed to bolt together, as there are actually no instructions supplied with the kit. And just like that, our throttle body is fitted to the motor, and that's rather awesome because there's every chance when you order stuff like this online, especially from Alibaba, a lot of the time it'll come and just not fit and you'll have to modify it, but that'll bolt it up really nicely, which means, you know, officially our engine now has a fuel injection throttle body on it, which is pretty cool. This is a map sensor, it is an air intake temperature sensor, and a throttle body all in one which is super interesting so I'm really intrigued to see how this all comes together and how it all works like I said earlier no one else has really done a build like this online there is another 125cc dude that I saw that kind of did this but he didn't run through exactly how it all came together very well so I'm gonna run you guys through every step of this in depth and it's gonna be a high quality build I cannot freaking wait I'm very intrigued to see whether it actually runs with all the ECU and everything like that but that's uh, a long way off yet but if you can imagine the turbo like fitted, we're definitely gonna run it up front somewhere because you gotta show that stuff off. Hopefully she doses as well, but obviously the turbo is gonna be clocked. We've gotta decide what side we wanna run it on, left or right. There's so many decisions to be made, but uh, I'm excited. Are you excited? Where's the old turbo, compound turbo, you know what I'm saying? 
Two turbos. One on top of the other, you reckon? Compound turbo setup. Don't get to hear yourself. We're gonna make it work with one first. I don't know if I mentioned before, but that whole ECU setup off Alibaba was $515 shipped to Australia. So make of that what you will. Obviously, if it works well, I'd say that's pretty well worth it, especially for the extra power and tunability we're gonna get. It's all an unknown at the moment, and that's what makes this series so freaking intriguing. But that is all we have time for today. I need to go home and get ready for a flight. If you have any questions or advice, please drop them in the comments below. I am all ears with that kind of stuff. But thank you guys so much for watching. Until next video, hit that subscribe button, join the journey, and I'll see you in the next one. You Peace! Fuel injected turbo 125cc drift cart. It's gonna be absolutely bonkers. And I probably should be scared for my life. Bye!